welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here is what I bring you from the world of medicine. How an ECG acts as a primary diagnostic tool in diagnosing heart diseases. Stress electrocardiography or as we all popularly call it the treadmill stress testing is a well-validated non-invasive diagnostic modality which is often available to clinicians at very low cost yet providing valuable functional data for coronary artery disease diagnosis. Now the advances in cardiac imaging as well as the existing limitations of this stress electrocardiography testing appears less favoured worldwide as reflected in some recent guideline updates. However, in a recent review published in the Indian Heart Journal, the past, present and future of stress electrocardiography testing provides a viewpoint on where it stands in coronary artery disease evaluation and if it will remain relevant as a diagnostic modality. The researchers also provide perspectives on how this stress test can coexist with other modalities such as a calcium scoring. The stress electrocardiography is widely studied, well validated, a low cost, low risk technique for evaluation of such diseases. It is also currently used for exercise prescription, functional capacity of the heart, dyspnea assessment as in when you are having difficulty in breathing, objective assessment of symptoms and even the stress hemodynamics for valvular disease assessment as well. However, in the current era, its use still continues to decline given various advances in the current imaging techniques. An ideal strategy would be to consider the hybrid strategy of calcium treadmill test that is, it serves as a gatekeeper for diagnosis and prognosis of such diseases. Hence, the researchers concluded that this could be a cost-effective initial approach to suspect coronary artery disease and also help in their diagnostic evaluation, particularly in India. So, the authors ended by saying, stress electrocardiography, in our opinion, is very well alive and well and is not ready for its swan song. These complications that is caused by coronary thromboembolic events often caused by COVID-19 vaccination. Thromboembolic complications after the COVID-19 vaccination have been previously reported. Now study in a recent journal that is the Indian Heart Journal, it reported that the coronary thromboembolic complications after a COVID-19 vaccination in a single centre during the initial three months of vaccination drive in India. A total of 89 patients with acute coronary syndrome and angiographic evidence of coronary thrombus, 42% had prior vaccination history. Covishield was the most commonly used vaccine that was accounting for around 76%, while only 24% had Covaxin. Now, baseline characteristics were similar in both the vaccinated as well as the non-vaccinated groups. Thrombocytopenia was not noted in any of the vaccinated patients, while 3.8% of the non-vaccinated group patients developed this condition. The researchers hence concluded that this is the first report of coronary thromboembolic complications after COVID-19 vaccination during the first three months of vaccination drive in India. However, further reports are definitely needed to identify the incidence of this rare but a serious adverse event following a COVID-19 vaccination drive. The Beneficial Effects of Omega-3 Fatty Acids According to a research review that was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, about 3 grams daily consumption of omega-3 fatty acids consumed either in foods or supplement variety appears to be the optimal daily dose to help lower your blood pressure. Now, omega-3 fatty acids, they are typically found in fatty fish such as salmon, tuna, sardines, trout, herring and even oysters. Some people also take combined docohexanoic acid and ecoseptanoic acid in their supplements. While some studies suggest that the consumption of omega-3 fatty acids may lower your blood pressure, the optimal dosage needed to lower this blood pressure has not been quite clear as such. The National Institutes of Health has established an adequate intake of omega-3 fatty acids for healthy people and they have set the standard at 1.1 to 1.6 grams daily depending upon the age and the sex. The researchers analyzed the results of 71 clinical trials 
and studies and examine the relationship between blood pressure and the omega-3 fatty acids in people who were aged 18 years and older or those who were having with or without high blood pressure or cholesterol disorders. There were nearly around 5,000 participants that were combined, ranging in the age group of 22 to 86 years. Participants, they took dietary as well as prescription supplement sources of fatty acids for an average of 10 weeks. The analysis compared adults who did not consume these two acids, that is the eco-septanoic acid as well as the docosexanoic acid, those who consumed between 2 to 3 grams daily of omega-3 fatty acids, either in the form of supplements, food or even both and it was found that those who consumed 2 to 3 grams had reduced systolic and diastolic blood pressure by an average of 2 mmHg. Now at 3 grams of a day of intake of omega 3s, systolic blood pressure decreased an average of 4.5 mmHg for those with hypertension and about 2 mmHg on an average for those without. However, at a 5 gram a day of dosage of omega 3s, the systolic blood pressure declined at an average of 4 mmHg for those with hypertension and less than 1 mmHg on an average for those who were without hypertension. The researchers hence said that omega-3 fatty acids may help reduce the risk of coronary heart disease by lowering the high blood pressure, especially among people who have already been diagnosed with hypertension condition. A new ultrasound tool that is used to detect blood flow in the brain. Now, to image microscopic vessels and measure the blood flow in the brain, the researchers used a tool called the ultrasound localization microscopy. Now this tool, it works by using the microscopic bubbles that is circulated through the bloodstream as a contrasting agent to measure the reflection of the high frequency acoustic waves passing through the body. Now their approach, it deploys the ultrasound technology to produce whole brain images of animal microvasculature in just a few seconds. This method is a huge improvement for the practicality of this technology and instead of averaging 2 or 3 minutes of data together, they need only 1 or 2 seconds of data and also acquire a really good image. Temporal resolution is hugely improved and that is very important to measure the dynamic properties of blood flow. Many neurological diseases and disorders have a very strong correlation to vascular diseases. Now down the road, their ultrasound technology may be a good candidate for a screening technology due to the low cost, portability and even the safety parameters. There is also a strong need to develop this technology for preclinical applications as well. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.